I want to give one more and then we're going to go into prayer unless you want to anything else you want to close with, but I do want to pray for you guys for a few minutes tonight about hearing the voice of God, opening up your ears, because here's a really, really important one. Prayer. Praying in the spirit, praying at all times, actually opens you up to hearing the voice of God. Prayer is a great way to cultivate the voice of God in your life. So you have to make prayer a habit throughout the day. If you can pray in the spirit, you need to make praying in the spirit a habit throughout the day. You need to treat prayer like oxygen. You don't forget to breathe. So don't forget to pray. That's why Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious about nothing, but instead in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. So God will speak in when you cultivate an atmosphere of prayer. When you get in your house, for example, call your cousins up, call your aunts and uncles up, call your friends up, say, hey, Thursday night, we're gonna meet at my house, 20, 30 of us for prayer. We have no agenda. We're literally gonna have some snacks and refreshments. We're gonna turn the lights down, put some worship music on, and we're all just gonna pray. I guarantee you that you're gonna, you will cultivate an atmosphere where God will start speaking. Watch what happens. You start laying hands on each other and God begins to give words of knowledge. God begins to give out words of prophecy, words of healing, deliverance breaks out. You will see the voice of God taking off in that living room as you begin to pray. TJ, how many times have you prayed for somebody and as you're praying, literally God just starts speaking through your mouth and you're going like, I don't even know what I'm praying right now. I don't even know what I'm saying because for lack of a better term, God will hijack you while you're praying for somebody. God will literally hijack your mouth and start speaking through you. When you pray, you get out of the passenger seat and you invite God to drive. And so when you're laying hands on somebody, you, got, you start speaking, God starts speaking, and you cultivate these atmospheres of the voice of God. Prayer is a great way to cultivate the voice of God. In fact, let me think about this. I, I, it's safe to say 90 plus percent of the time I've heard God speak direction in my life where God will say, go do this, go do this, start this, go there, start a podcast, build a studio, go here, do 90 plus percent, just because I don't want to lie and say 100 percent, 90 plus percent was when I was praying. When I shared earlier how God audibly said, Alyssa is going to be your wife, I was in prayer when that happened. When God directed me to go to a different church, I was in prayer when God happened. When God told me to build this studio, I was in prayer when that happened. When God told me to go online in 2019, guess where I was? Type it in the chat. I was in prayer when God spoke that. I found, TJ, when I look back and think about it, so many moments where God spoke direction in my life, specifically direction in my life, it was in the place of prayer. So guys, please, don't expect God to speak if you're not spending time. I go back to how I started in the place of prayer. We know that the Father is in the secret place. If you want to experience and hear God, go where God is. Get in the place of prayer. Getting in prayer meetings, starting a prayer meeting is a great way to cultivate the voice of God. I'll give you the last one tonight, TJ, of hearing the voice of God, um, ways that God speaks. And then let's get into prayer. Let's start praying for these people here. The most important part is actually not the teaching, which is great. It's been amazing. The Holy Ghost has been flowing tonight. We can go three hours, but actually I want to activate you guys in prayer. And I also want to pray for those of you that don't have the Holy Spirit baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I want to pray for you to get tongues, to get that prayer language tonight yeah. so you can really open up that channel of you with God and, and hear God clearly. Yeah, you know, I'm new to marry my wife because I was in an anointed service once mm. and we were in intense worship and the Lord spoke to me straight at me. It wasn't an audible voice again. It was right to my spirit, man, that still small voice. And the Lord, as I was just sc scanning the crowd, because uh, I would go and pray for people and stuff. It was our Bible college, uh, Bible college chapel and she had just been visiting in. It was a Zion experience. They used to have like a campus experience, campus days. And so I just turned to my left and I saw her there. Now I don't pray, I never prayed for women at Bible college because I thought that was weird. I just prayed for men. <laughs> so I wasn't like, it wasn't like I was looking around scouting like, all right, who am I going to ask out for coffee after? That wasn't it. I was literally- Pray for him and then invite him on a date while I'm praying. I feel like the Lord is showing me a vision of me and you at coffee tomorrow. No, you weren't doing that. You weren't doing that. No, go and pray for them. And then like, as yeah. I'm praying, what's your number? Yeah. <laughs> no, do not do that, y'all. Yeah. I, I, but I was just scanning the crowd to pray for whoever the Lord would highlight. And then the Lord highlighted her and the Lord spoke to me three things. That's a woman who knows how to pray. Wow. That's a woman who knows how to love, who loves me more than you do. 
and that's a woman that knows how to worship me, and you're going to marry her. Wow. And I, at that time, didn't believe in God speaking to marry, you know, marry a specific person. I didn't believe in that. I actually mocked it a lot of times because at Bible, Bible college, they call it bridal college, ring by spring or your money back. I mean, yep, it's like... Yep. It's like an infomercial, you know? It's part of like the, the way they, they bring people into Bible college. Yeah, listen, if you don't get an education, at least you might leave with a spouse, you know? Go ahead, go ahead. So I, I used to make fun of that. Matter of fact, my friend Justice was sitting right next to me and we would we would make fun of it together, which was wrong. I repented. But when I when I heard that from the Lord, I turned to my friend Justice and I, I nudged him and I said, Justice, the Lord just spoke to me. I'm going to marry that lady. Now he laughed at me because he thought I was joking because of how many times we joked about it. But I said, just, I'm being serious. I'm going to marry her. And I pro I did not pursue, like, not to sound like I'm, an, I'm a jerk. I just didn't make it happen. I, I let it happen organically. I did not pursue. Um, I had talked to her after briefly, but that was it. There, there was no, there was no, like, uh, poaching or anything like that. And... Uh, Two years, no, that was in 2013. Two years later, Justice is one of my groomsmen at my wedding, standing right next to me in the, in the, in the wedding ceremony as that lady, Carrie Malkanji, is walking down the aisle. And I got wow. married to her, and I'm still married. And let me tell you something. It's important to hear from God as to who you're going to marry. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Because it'll make or break your ministry, yes. your life, and your, your entire being. Who you marry is second on the level of importance of decisions of what you of decisions you need to make. Number one decision is to get saved and choose Jesus Christ for, for as Lord of your life, to get saved and give your life to Christ. But number two decision that's uh, just like right under it, like 1.1, 1.2 would be like who you marry because who you marry matters. I can tell you, Isaiah can testify. Yep. If he married wrong, he would be out of the ministry today. Guaranteed. He, he'd be out of the ministry. If I married him wrong, I would not. Think of the type of woman he needs to have when he's on the road, especially in the first eight, nine years of your ministry on the road. 40 weeks a year. Think of the type of woman you need to have. Think of the type of woman I have to have where I'm on the road two weeks out of the month. Uh, constantly. They're, they're very special people that God's tailor-made for us. And so it's important to ask the Lord who to marry. And the, and God will show you. He's The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains favor from the Lord. Part of God's favor expressed to your life is showing you who to marry. And so that's an important thing to, to, to do. I'll, I'll tell you another testimony and we can close up. Well, I was... Um, I was uh, in 2021. Remember when we did that Orlando event? Yes. With uh, yeah, in in Florida, we did yep. an Orlando event together. And now, in during that time, as a Canadian, I could not go into the United States of America. And so it, it was during the whole thing and all that. Is that because and you didn't so have the I, Fauci ouchie? I didn't get the Fauci ouchie. You didn't have the Fauci no ouchie. Way. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to. I would have got it, but I prefer to have both arms functional and the right Go side ahead. of my face. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, I, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't have access into the United States, but I felt in my spirit to accept the meeting. And we ended up, we ended up, uh, I ended up booking a tour by faith, not knowing how the heck I was going to get into the States. And I'm in Saskatchewan. I've got to preach in two days. It was July, 2021. I've, I've got to get to Orlando in two days. I'm preaching, I'm finishing up a meeting in Saskatchewan, and I don't know how I'm getting to Orlando, Florida. I have no idea. I don't have a flight booked because I couldn't book a flight. So what did I do? I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. When you don't know what to do, pray Come in the on. language you don't know how to say. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. When you don't know what to pray, just pray in a language that you don't know how to say. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you'll pray in the Spirit, but then God can give you the interpretation to then pray in English, to pray in your understanding standing to pray in your own language so i was praying in the spirit and as i prayed in the spirit in my hotel room in saskatoon saskatchewan the lord drops in my spirit a scripture from acts where paul was in damascus and locked in a warrant out for his arrest and he needed to get out and a hole was made in the wall where he was let down through a basket 
And the Lord said, I can make a hole in the border and get you through and wow. get you where, where you need to be. So I began That's to deep. pray that through. And then another scripture came to my spirit in Acts chapter 4, where the Bible says, sorry, Acts chapter 12, when Peter was awakened by the angel and he led Peter through the first and second guard posts. And then the iron gate that led to the city opened of its own accord. And God let, led Peter out of jail to Mary's house where they were having a prayer meeting. And he was delivered from the hand of Herod that day. But it happened as the angel blinded the guard posts, the first and the second guard posts. And then the iron gate to the city opened. The border opened for Peter to cross through. And so I, I knew that. I'm not bright enough to know that. I'm not bright enough to think that. I knew that was the Holy Spirit, like you said before, using scriptures that I knew to stir up in my heart, to build up my most holy faith so that I can ask in faith, nothing doubting. For the Bible says, when you ask in faith, you'll receive from the Lord. And so I, I, I prayed those two scriptures through. I kid you not, a few hours later, I get a phone call from a guy at the, the church I was ministering at, who I wasn't talking about this. I wasn't airing my business. Nobody needed to know. And this guy calls me, he says, I own a plane. I have a jet that I, I, I own, I fly. I can't fly you in, but I have a friend that's in a certain place in Canada. If you'll fly there tomorrow, he'll, he'll fly you into the United States, no questions asked. I called wow. the guy, I was on a plane into Montana the next day, and I got to the meeting that I preached with Isaiah, and we had a powerful meeting there. Come a on. lot of people stayed healed and delivered. I'm telling you, when God wants to bring you somewhere, he'll not just show you the vision, he wants to give you specific direction so that you can walk in the steps that have already been ordered by the Lord to get to the high place God has you. And I see every one of you hearing specific instructions from God to attain and fulfill the heavenly vision that God has laid out for your life. In Jesus' name, the devil can try his best to sweep you out and take you out, but everything the devil's going to do, God's making it fail. You're going to make it. He that began a good work in you is going to bring it to completion. He that started you out is going to finish you. He that began you is going to bring it to pass. In Jesus' name.